the other day I did a segment about teams that are, are in no man's land, NBA no man's land. They're in a desert. The Mavericks weren't there because they have Luka. But outside of Luka, there's nothing on the Mavs roster that excites you. They just signed Kemba Walker. I doubt that does anything or has any impact on how anybody is going to view them. Kemba Walker is a shell of himself at this point in his career. They, they might as well sign Isaiah Thomas. That's how much I really think this move did nothing. Luka Doncic right now feels a lot like LeBron in 07. I'm not saying Luka's going to carry this roster to the finals, although he carried this roster to the Western Conference Finals last season. What I mean is that when the Cavs drafted LeBron, they failed to build around him properly, and that's why he left to go team up with D-Wade and Bosh in Miami in 2010. Luka Doncic right now has nothing around him. The players, they have some good role players, but a secondary star? In this modern NBA, you need a secondary star to win a championship. And not just in this, not just in this modern NBA, when you look at the history of the NBA, look at all the contenders that we look at this year. The Bucks. you have Giannis, you got Middleton. And even Middleton for a long time was not viewed as that secondary star, but he changed the narrative in 2021. But even he was, it was, he was borderline. Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Look at the West, the Warriors, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, or Draymond Green. Last year, Andrew Wiggins was like that second guy. And all these teams also have insane depth. You look at the Nuggets, a contender in the West this year. Jokic, Murray, it's a dynamic duo. What is Luka's dynamic duo? It's him and Spencer Dinwiddie or Christian Wood. On the Mavericks, you cannot name a player that is the solidified second best player on the team. And it's not because they have a, an abundance of good players. It's because they have an abundance of eh, so-so players. Right now, what's happening to Luka is the same thing that happened to LeBron when he was in Cleveland. The team is failing to build around him. They tried to do it in the Kristaps Porzingis trade. Kristaps was unhealthy. That's one. And it was very clear the fit wasn't there. They misjudged on that, but I'll give them some leeway because Chris Haas-Porzingis, I would have taken that risk as well, and I thought it was going to work out, but the fit wasn't there. They trade him to Washington for Dinwiddie and Bertans. I thought that was a good move, especially getting Dinwiddie back. But I view Dinwiddie as a backup point guard, not as a consistent starting point guard. He's played fantastic this year, better than, a, better than what he has in the past before. But I think a lot of that is due to the pressure that Luka takes off of him. The, the real fumble the Mavericks had is not bringing back Jalen Brunson. That's the biggest fumble they had. I mean, just, it's, them not bringing back Jalen Brunson was ridiculous. And there's going to be people out there that say, but Jalen Brunson wanted to play in New York. He wanted to get the money. You're right about one thing. He wanted that money. He definitely wanted that money. Playing in New York? I don't know. I think that if he got the same money from Dallas, he'd be in Dallas. Let's just look at the timeline of how bad the Dallas Mavericks messed up the Jalen Brunson situation. Before the 2021-2022 season, Brunson was willing to extend his contract with the Mavericks. He was asking for, what, 15 to $18 million per year. The Mavericks did not want to negotiate with him. Brunson has a breakout year. In January, asked to extend with Dallas. Dallas is not willing to negotiate at that time in January. The Mavs go on their playoff run. Jalen Brunson is phenomenal in the playoffs. Jalen Brunson played his way from 18 mil a year to 26, 28 million dollars a year. That's how much he improved. The Mavericks could have signed him for 18 mil a year at the beginning of the year. They didn't do that. They waited it out. And guess what? He got a $100 million back from the Knicks. But even in those negotiations, Jalen Brunson has said before he thought he was going to be a Maverick for life. He said that it all came down to business. If the Mavericks had offered Jalen Brunson that same money the Knicks offered him, he would still be with the Mavericks. And although I don't think Jalen Brunson would be doing what he's doing now with the Knicks in Dallas, 
just because of opportunity and Luca he has the ball so much that the opportunities are going to be less. Brunson right now in New York is averaging 21 and 6. He's played amazing at an all-star level. In Dallas he wouldn't have done that, but he would have been 19 and 5 at least. And who knows, maybe he is 21 and 6. But then now you have a starting point guard in Brunson and Dinwiddie's off the bench, and Christian Wood's off the bench, and you have two of the better bench players in the league in Dinwiddie and Christian Wood. Jalen Brunson should have stayed in Dallas, and that would have helped him tremendously. Now, do I think Jalen Brunson would have made this team a contender? I don't think so. I think it, it, would, it, it still would have taken a huge carry job from Luka to even get to the finals, but it makes them better. They got worse. The Mavericks' two best offseason moves in the last two years have been signing Reggie Bullock and signing JaVale McGee. Those have been their best moves. Reggie Bullock is solid. JaVale McGee has not fit in with this team. They barely play him. And when's the last player you can name that the Mavericks have drafted that's turned out to be a good role player? Josh Green is trending towards that trajectory right now. He looks pretty good. But the Mavericks, they don't sign well. They don't draft well for the most part. And Luka Doncic has no help. I don't think Luka wins a championship in Dallas because, for one, the talent around him is not there. And number two, the offense is way too reliant on him right now. We've seen this before. When a player takes a ton of shots, their stats look amazing. They're an all-time great player. But there's nobody around him. We've seen it before. We saw it with Kobe and Smush Parker. We saw it with LeBron and the Cavs. We saw it with James Harden in Houston. And the reason Harden was able to get almost over the hump and beat Golden State was because he had another ball handler in Chris Paul alongside him, helping him. Brunson could have been to Luka with what Chris Paul was to James Harden. Obviously, Chris Paul is a better player. But it's the same concept. Instead, they let Jalen Brunson walk. He played well enough to, to warrant $100 million, but Dallas could have signed him for way cheaper. And I just have a feeling that Luka's tenure in Dallas is getting wasted. And this isn't the first time we've seen it. They damn near almost wasted Dirk Nowitzki in Dallas. But... Then Dirk went on that amazing 2011 playoff run, which nobody saw coming, and that saved his entire legacy. Luka needs help, and the Mavericks have failed to do it. And just watching the usage percentage night in and night out, what he has to do, the playoff performances, it's all-time great stuff. But you can't help but think about, man, if this guy had a second player a second all-star playing beside him, maybe like a Jalen Brown or even a Chris Middleton, the Mavericks would be so much better.